بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں السلام علیکم لیڈیز اینڈ جنرلمن ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی آر موونگ آن ود دا رول آف اسٹیک ہولڈرز اینڈ ان دا پاسٹ فیو سیشنز وی بین ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا رول آف پریس پرنٹ میڈیا سوشل میڈیا اینڈ دا الیکٹرانک میڈیا ناؤ وین وی ٹاک اباؤٹ کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ دا پریس دین ڈیفینیٹلی جسٹ لائک وی وی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا بورڈ دا مینجمنٹ دا بورڈ آف ڈائریکٹرز دی پرائیویٹ اینڈ گورمنٹ دا پرائیویٹ sector and the government regulators uh, are extremely important in this particular context. Uh, public opinion plays a significant role in self-regulation by private organizations to improve corporate governance. So uh, again, what we see is, is that any organizations or institutions future hinges upon the feedback of the public. So whatever product or services the organization is uh, basically offering and then also the support that it provides, which is usually called customer uh, satisfaction and customer support units that they have, that tends to uh, mold the public opinion uh, because based upon how the product serves their needs and secondly, uh, what is the after sale or what are the different mechanisms available if the customer does not like the product is something very, very important. And what we see is, is that the, the press uh, tends to regulate all of this uh, because uh, it is an external whistleblower and again ensures that things do not go uh, totally out of hand. In the 1980s, during the financial scandals of BCCI and Maxell Group, uh, self-regulation policies were basically followed by the different institutions to save themselves from uh, being wound up or uh, being uh, going into bankruptcy. So what we see is, is that the press has a very fundamental role uh, which tends to strengthen and augment and reinforce uh, the private sector and also uh, the government regulators. And that is uh, very, very important as we have seen historically also. Uh, the publicity route defined by Cadbury committee had the advantage that the self-regulatory organization had the power to impose it. So again, what we see is, is that if there is a self-regulatory organization, then uh, all of this is regulated uh, by that organization. And again, uh, it basically means that uh, it is again, unethical and immoral to over project uh, whatever you have gone. And uh, through wrong projections or through uh, over projections, we have seen that fines and court enforced penalties uh, again uh, would uh, have its own limited effectiveness. So uh, what would happen would be that uh, when people were not or when institutions uh, were not being honest and truthful in their dissemination of information, then fines and court enforced penalties would be imposed and uh, they would be quite effective to ensure that the organization falls, uh, follows the rules of law and the stipulated uh, rules, regulations and policies uh, of that particular organization which becomes extremely important. In 1992, 19 recommendations by the Cadbury committee were first uh, effort at reforms by means of disclosure and public pressure. So we see that in 1992, 19 recomm recommendations uh, were emanated by the Cadbury committee uh, which basically promoted disclosure and public pressure. So that is very important and that gave a new dimension and a new paradigm shift uh, within corporate governance and governance and management as a whole of the corporate sector. Greenberry and Hempel reports also disclose the requirements uh, for the disclosure. So again, the Hempel report and the Greenberry report were very specific that how such disclosure should be done, how the organization should interface uh, with the press and when the press is providing certain information, how should the organization respond uh, to such things, both positive and negative. So uh, overall, what we see, uh, it has been very helpful. The extent of success by disclosure and publicity approach is, is widespread. So uh, we see that nowadays in this uh, era of social media, uh, we see that organizations have millions and millions of subscribers or followers, which tend to uh, greatly cater to the success of the organization and also the fact that the public becomes Uh, a regulator and the public becomes uh, a judge. Uh, so it, it is the informal uh, moral, uh, you can say, judgment which is given uh, by the public, which now uh, is gaining a lot of widespread uh, appreciation. Uh, an example is that the Hong Kong China, uh, the stock exchange uses the media uh, as a sanction. So again, uh, in Hong Kong, and the stock exchange formally engages with the media and ensures that through the media, they are able to curb mall practices uh, and uh, corruption and also uh, any illegalities 
uh, which are taking place. Uh, in Hong Kong, the stock exchange uh, takes out advertisement space to notify the public about a firm security violation. So again, uh, very uh, modern and uh, very open. Uh, so if any firm uh, in the stock exchange uh, is not uh, practicing corporate governance and is doing some illegal activity, then uh, they are put into the newspaper and made a greater dissemination for everyone. Uh, another point uh, from uh, a more, you can say, a narrow context would be shaming uh, as a personal penalty for the executives involved. So again, uh, what happens is that the public gets together and then they tend to shame or they tend to uh, have a condescending attitude uh, against those people who have been accused or proven to have been criminals of corporate governance. So that shaming context is very important. And again, shaming can introduce a financial penalty if others know, update their beliefs about the reliability of the executives and company. So this whole shaming thing uh, puts the uh, morality at a higher pedestal than even the law. And because if someone is deviating or someone uh, is compromising, then through the media, uh, those individuals or uh, that individual uh, can be penalized and also uh, made to bear the brunt of loss of credibility and loss of reputation. Thank you so much.